Okay, so uh, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to everyone. Okay, so on behalf of the organizer, I, uh, I wish you all welcome to the UITM Research Live Webinar Series 2.0. Okay, so before we start, saya mohon peserta-peserta untuk mutekan mikrofon. Ya. So the following will be the the format of the talk today. The Q&A session will be after the presentation. However, uh, you can also post your questions in the chat box. So uh, I will note your uh, respective questions and I will I will uh, tolong bacakan uh, on your behalf lah after the presentation session. Uh, the title for today's webinar is Learning Disorders in Children, How Artificial Intelligence Assists in Detecting Disabilities. Okay, so our speaker for today is uh, Professor Datin Dr. Wahidah Mansur. So uh, a little bit of her background. Professor Dr. Wahidah is a director at Microwave Research Institute, UITM Shah Alam. During her working period in UITM, she, ha she has obtained a total of 25 research grants from multiple sources, uh, such as UITM, Ministry of Higher Education, and also MUSTI. She has published numerous, uh, numerous conference and journal papers and has received a few awards for her excellent teaching and research achievements. Uh, her main research interests include biomedical signal processing, brain computer interface, embedded system design, computer engineering and wireless communication. She is a member of a board of engineers Malaysia, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, Institution of Engineering and Technology, um, Institute of Engineers Malaysia, uh, Malaysia Society of Medical and Biological Engineering, and Malaysia Board of Technologies. She was the chair of the IEEE Engineering and Medicine and Biology Society, Malaysia chapter from 2015 to 2016, and is currently a past chair of the IEEE EMBS. Okay, so without further ado, I invite upon Datin to give her, her presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much Dr. Magat Shahirul for the warm introduction. Before I proceed, I would like to thank the uh, TNCPI office for giving me the chance and opportunity to talk about the detection of learning disorder in children using artificial intelligence. Uh, as mentioned uh, by Dr. Magat Shahirul, I will, sh uh, I will share with you the current techniques, the current techniques used by some researchers and also techniques used by my research team in, de in detecting the specific learning disorders. I hope uh, that at the end of this talk, the participants um, will find that it is beneficial to you and then will find that this talk is beautiful and you will see the potential pathway uh, for future studies in this field. Okay, um, let me share first the... So first of all, before I go further, I would like to introduce you uh, to Microwave Research Institute. As mentioned uh, by Dr. Maka just now, I'm the director of research, uh, Microwave Research Institute. So at MRI, we focus on uh, research and development uh, in areas related to microwave technology. For example, you look at uh, the, the list uh, on the screen. Uh, we focus on wireless uh, technology, radio frequency, um, Many more high frequency application of ceramic thin, microwave non dissertative testing. Uh, we have also a focus, uh, we have also areas of uh, biomedical applications, uh, radar systems, and electromagnetic sense application, um, wireless power transfer, and artificial intelligence. So, if you look at, uh, at the left side of this screen, you can see that there are the facilities that we have. We have uh, um, Equipment, uh, good equipment, and then we have uh, laboratories, um, well equipped laboratories. Uh, we also um, provide consultation service uh, in high frequency component and system fabrication to the industry. So I would like to invite uh, you to join us as a collaborator if you are interested uh, and also or as a postgraduate uh, student or an associate member. Let us um, work together um, to explore uh, um, uh, anything uh, in the microwave technology or biomedical applications. All right, let's look at the uh, content of this talk. So uh, this is the contents I will introduce to you uh, to some of the methodology, uh, the terminology, sorry, uh, because I think maybe most of you are not familiar with the terms that used in the talk. Okay, I will introduce to you uh, what is uh, learning disabilities and then also what is uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, 
Uh, then I will go and explain um, how researchers diagnose dysgraphia, uh, dyscalculia, and dyslexia, and finally summarize uh, everything. All right. Um, most parents are concerned about their child progress in reading and writing when their child are about um, at the age of five to six years old. I'm sure um, uh, many parents, uh, the participants are also parents like myself. I'm worried about my child progress in um, the studies. So if your child doesn't have a uh, health problem that relate to the learning um, difficulties, you don't have to worry because uh, it may be because of the learning, uh, the teaching approach. So if we change the teaching approach, then everything uh, will be okay. Okay. And according to the studies, uh, about 5 to 12 percent of the nation population has a learning disabilities. So in for our country, at least 132,692 uh, primary school children um, has a difficulty in uh, reading, um, um, writing, and uh, some uh, of them uh, in the doing mathematics. If you look at uh, school children of the age of 7 to 12 years old, it's about 25% has a learning disability in both reading and maths. So it is important all right, uh, for, for us to detect uh, the learning disability at early stage. Why? Because we want to help the children. We want to help the children so that uh, maybe, uh, so that another reason, we can design and develop um, a teaching pedagogy that is suitable for the children. All right, now we are in the era of uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Okay, I think you are familiar with this. So in this uh, IR 4.0, the top uh, technologies, we have AI, all right? We have AI, artificial intelligence, a neuro technology, internet of things, and many more. So uh, AI is the one of the important um, technologies in uh, IR 4.0. So AI or, uh, has been used in various domains, for example, so in healthcare, for example, we have a system, a support system, a disease support system for preventing stroke, uh, stroke prevention. So this system can uh, give uh, information to the physician uh, if someone, okay, the patient has a stroke or if the patient at the risk of having a heart attack. So um, this, uh, the system is already available. Uh, um, for uh, for the clinician to use, and another one is the autonomous vehicles. This is a very uh, famous. Um, I think all of I think many of you have heard about uh, self driving cars and uh, auto um, drive uh, autopilot um, drone, and that is also popular. So in marketing, also we have you they have used artificial intelligence. And thanks to the artificial intelligence, because um, if without the artificial intelligence, uh, it will be a nightmare to us to search a product that we want. So with the uh, with AI, we can easily find a project that we, uh, the product that we want to buy. So that is the use of uh, AI in the uh, marketing. Uh, in a banking, for example, it's, um, AI is used to detect normalist and credit card fraud. Okay. So now, why do we need AI in detecting the learning disabilities? Okay, of course, to improve the diagnosis. We want to speed up the therapies. We don't want to delay. And then we don't want to have um, uh, changes uh, in the edu education plan. If, if Let's say you send your child to a, a school, then you have to uh, you find it's not suitable you have to change another school. Uh, we don't want that. If we can detect early, then we can uh, have... a uh, a better effective uh, effect education plan for our children. So now what is learning disorder? Okay, the definition is uh, learning disorders are barriers to learning and do not have severe disabilities. Uh, what are the severe disabilities? Severe disabilities are such as um, deafness, um, cerebral palsy, uh, and also um, um, Down syndrome and many more. So if they don't have that, then they are fall into the category of learning disorder. Yeah, barriers to learning that, that make it difficult for someone to master the basic, basic things. For example, reading, uh, writing, spelling and so on. So we have specific learning disabilities. Okay, uh, what is specific learning disabilities? 
uh, this specific learning disability meaning that this uh, difficulty in the specific skill of the problem related to the learning. For example, uh, that cause the pro uh, the person cannot master, cannot uh, they, they have a trouble trouble in like reading, uh, writing, listening, speaking, reasoning, and doing maths. For example, dyslexia. Okay, you have dyslexia on the right side here. Dyslexia um, meaning that if the children with dyslexia, they have difficulty in reading, spelling, writing and doing math. Okay. Many disabil uh, disabilities. So, so children with this uh, disability, usually when you look at them, when they write, they write and write, uh, they read and write very slowly. They always confuse the order of letters in words. Um, and then they sometimes put the letter in the wrong way around. For example, you when you ask them to uh, write B, they will write D. And then, uh, like another word, if you ask them to write M, they will write W. Okay, uh, that's dyslexia. And uh, another one we have uh, in the category of specific learning disability is dysgraphia. Dysgraphia is impairment of handwriting ability. It's not the same as dyslexia. Uh, I will show you in a minute the example of a handwriting produced by dyslexic children and dysgraphic children. So um, dysgraphia, um, dysgraphia uh, is difficult to diagnose. Why? Some, because the handwriting. Sometimes when you look at the handwriting, uh, it, at the beginning is is very clear the handwriting and towards the end is blur so you cannot see sometimes when they write uh, they write just like uh, the, the writing just like uh, going up to, uh, in a, on a mountain something like that yeah it is not not in on the straight line so that's the problem with this uh, dysgraphia um and then if you look look closely the, the letter also uh, they have um the the distance between uh, one letter to another letter is not consistent okay and uh, some letter the distance is very near and then the other letter is very uh, far away uh, so that is dysgraphia right so uh, next is dyscalculia dyscalculia is difficulty in doing mathematics okay and some um, children with dyscalculia they cannot uh, count number they cannot count they cannot do simple uh, calculation uh, that dyscalculia so uh, another uh, commodities that associate with learning disorders, you look at it yeah, on the right side is ADHD. This is the um, called the um, attention deficit uh, hyperactive disorder. Uh, we call in short ADHD. So for this one, it is a neurodevelopment disorder. So sometimes it's, uh, it, it is a combination uh, of persistent problems such as difficulty in sustaining attention. So children who have ADHD, they cannot uh, focus, okay? Uh, they cannot pay attention, they cannot sit in still, and then they also sometimes cannot control impulsive behaviour. Impulsive behaviour meaning that they just act. They just act without thinking the consequences, all right? So that, uh, that's the children with ADHD. And another one is uh, autism. So this is a complex development disorder. So um, it causes problems um, with thinking, uh, feeling, uh, feeling and language and the ability to relate to others. So children with autism, they have to be able to communicate with their friends and then some of them just like uh, live in their own world. So uh, that, that's uh, the characteristic of uh, children with autism. So for parents who have children uh, with a learning disorder, they have to pay more attention to them, uh, uh, spend more time because uh, these children need um, uh, maybe special needs compared to uh, non-disabled children. Okay, this is uh, diagram, uh, this picture just uh, to show to you the difference between uh, dyslexia and dysgraphia. So this uh, on the left side is the dyslexia writing. So you can see uh, in the first column here, okay, actually it's the second column. So uh, this is a uh, wrong, uh, wrong uh, uh, long letters. Uh, the, the right one is the correct. So um, in this example, the, the child, we ask the, the child, the, we ask the child to write B, uh, he write D. And we ask to write W, he write M. Uh, that is this let's see, uh, uh, let's see children's writing. Okay, you can see um, down here, uh, like Q also, they, uh, they, they, uh, he is confused with the letter Q, uh, he write P. All right, so this example, but uh, with the dysgraphia, the writing, uh, if you look at the writing, you can see the distance between the letter is inconsistent. 
Okay, like this bar, you have a large distance between R and K. So, and you can also see the writing initially is clear and then in the end, it becomes fades. Alright, what is artificial intelligence? Okay, it is a technique, right? that technique that learn from experience. And then this technique adjusts new inputs and then to perform human-like tasks. Uh, that is artificial intelligence. Okay, so the, uh, this AI can be achieved in many ways. The most popular fields um, are machine learning. So these are the fields of AI. There are many. So these are the most popular machine learning. We have machine learning, uh, natural language processing, um, expert systems, uh, vision, machine visions, robotic and autonomous vehicles. So I think you are familiar with autonomous vehicles. I mentioned just now. Uh, the examples are the um, autopilot uh, drone, uh, auto self-driving a uh, car. And then for the robotic example is Sophia. Um, I think I'm sure that some of you have seen the video uh, where the Sophia talked to our previous Prime Minister, Tun Mohadir. Uh, Sophia can... Um, respond like human okay when Tun Mahathir ask question he uh, she respond like uh, he is human and that's you that's Sophia the new uh, robot with artificial intelligence then we have machine vision machine vision where we have robot with camera so this is used in industry so now we'll if we look at the machine learning so AI AI will um, how the AI um, detect um, abnormalities. So the AI will use the learning strategies. It will use the learning strategies and so uh, based on the classification, based on the coefficients of the input and then uh, to, to predict the model of the future data set. Uh, that is how the AI doing, uh, do. Uh, does. And so and the uh, types of the learning uh, strategies one of it is supervised learning uh, and it has four types so for learning and supervised learning semi-supervised learning and reinforcement learning so supervised learning and the uh, ai uh, will look at uh, look at the um, known known uh, training data set uh, from the known training data set it react and for unsupervised learning it will look at unknown unknown uh, training data set and it try to um, to map the output with the known uh, input uh, that is supervised learning for unsupervised learning. It uh, will uh, map the output with the uh, the input uh, of the unknown uh, and from the unknown data set. For the semi semi supervised learning, uh, this AI will uh, use as mixed unknown and known training data set. For the reinforcement learning, uh, this is a uh, type that. Um, where the AI, we call it autonomous, uh, where the AI learns from several activities uh, to produce outcomes. Eh? It will learn from uh, several activities. For example, it's just like when we, uh, when we were young, uh, we uh, learn how to ride a bicycle. We fall, but we um, uh, what, get up again and then we try to ride the bicycle until we can ride the bicycle. So, uh, the enforcement learning uh, is the same as that. The machine will learn, uh, learn until uh, it can produce the targeted output. Uh, so that is uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, and so now uh, I think I have already explained how AI does it. Uh, I forgot. Uh, under the supervised learning, we have, an, uh, this is just a popular method. Uh, we have many methods uh, of supervised learning. Um, and um, here uh, on the screen, you can see it is one of them uh, uh, support with the machine and another one neural network. Uh, this neural network includes the um, the what to call the best uh, the classical sorry the classical neural network and also the advanced neural network uh, which is uh, the deep learning the, the popular one. All right, so let's look at uh, how um, this we are diagnostic. Yeah, how that uh, the researcher. Uh, detect or diagnose dysgraphia. So in the recent, this is recent techniques eh? and if you can see, uh, I look and take it from the uh, 19, uh, 2019 um, articles. Okay, so researchers use questionnaires. Okay, you look at on the screen here, so like Gish uh, and Tim, um, he use um, questions. Okay, 
So the question on the screen, so the child uh, or the parents have to answer the question. Uh, for example, the question, does the child has very massive, uh, messy handwriting? So does the child holds a pencil or lead? So, and then next is does the child struggle to express ideas in writing? Okay, these are the questions that they ask. And then when um, the system um, uh, take the answers, the system will, um, will check uh, using the decision trees. Um, expert system is just like, if you are familiar with the um, programming language, uh, it's just like a uh, statement if then else. Huh? It uses rule based. So uh, in the programming, you, many of them use if then a statement to decide on the, uh, uh, the output uh, to the um, experiment. Okay, for example here, uh, this uh, I think uh, it used uh, as a system. Uh, the the oh, sorry the gauge uh, uh, uses as a system and it has um, output there down there. Okay, and, uh, whether uh, the children has dysgraphia or not, uh, and dysgraphia or not. Okay, the second um, method is used by some draw uh, and a uh, team. So where um, they use handwriting on X, okay, the, ch uh, the child have to write on the tablet. So this is the example where the child um, write on the tablet. This is the writing of the child. So then uh, some draw uh, use artificial neural network uh, to uh, diagnose dysgraphia. So I have another example uh, to uh, share with you. This is uh, another um, technique uh, process used by Karia Wasam uh, and team. Uh, in uh, their work, they use letter images okay, from mobile screen. So again, they uh, recently people uh, like to use tablet or mobile. Uh, on, it means a uh, handphone. So then from the letter images, so Karya Wasam and team uh, process, uh, do, do the pre-processing uh, of the letter images and then they segment uh, the images to produce an uh, input to the classifier. Okay, before they can pass to the classification stage, uh, they produce um, uh, these uh, features. Uh, what are the features? Um, the success probability of the writing letters or words. Uh, and then they also uh, uh, take uh, the total correct count and also the total incorrect count of written letters or words, uh, total number of attempts, total time taken to complete the task, and also total erase count in screening mechanism. So in their work, they use convolution neural networks. Uh, convolution neural network is one of the type of deep learning. So Karya Wasam has used deep learning uh, in, uh, in their work. Okay. And also, uh, they use support vector machine. So, this, as I mentioned just now, uh, SVM or support vector machine and uh, neural network, uh, they are popular uh, methods use um, uh, popular AI methods used in the um, detecting of um, specific learning uh, dis disabilities. Okay, in uh, diagnosing uh, dyscalculia, so the technique use. Um, as a uh, displays on the screen. At the initial stage, uh, many researchers use arithmetic tasks. So these arithmetic tasks, uh, they execute, uh, executed it to see the ability of the children. Uh, like, like I said uh, previously, the ability of the children to do uh, counting numbers, the ability to um, do simple calculation, simple addition, simple subtraction. Then uh, the inputs also, uh, the inputs of the um, system can be fMRI brain images, a status of the answer uh, because they, they, they have a few questions. So they look at the status of the answer. Uh, for example, whether the answer is correctly, is correct, okay, uh, whether the answer is incorrect and whether the child attempt or not attempt the questions. Uh, that are the inputs to the um, uh, classification stage. And then some of researchers use EEG signals uh, recorded during arithmetic tasks. Uh, so these are the example of inputs uh, that are, they are used in their system. So in the dis, uh, detection stage, uh, some of them use statistical analysis. Uh, they don't use AI. Uh, and many researchers use random forest and separate vector machine. They, this is for this clear uh, 
uh, detection. So example of, an, this is another example, this again by Karya Wasam uh, and team. Um, they, uh, in their work, they, the first thing they do is uh, they, um, they perform the screening test, uh, this cochlear screening test, where they check, as I mentioned, where the ability of the children in counting the numbers, uh, in, uh, uh, in comparing the numbers, and also do, uh, doing the basic arithmetic addition. So, uh, Kairwasam and, uh, and team also uh, use uh, images. Now, images from mobile screen, they do the pre-processing um, uh, images, they process the images and then also classification. So now the input input to the classifier, uh, there are three types, uh, average time taken to complete the task. So they set uh, the time for the child to complete the task. So they look at the average time. And then total erase count and then number of time exceeds boundary. So these are the um, inputs that they um, pass to the classifier. So they tested, uh, they examined uh, the performance of three type, uh, uh, classifiers, uh, support vector machine, random forest and naive bayers. So these are the work uh, carried out by Karya Wasam. Okay, now we move to uh, diagnosing dyslexia. Um, in the conventional method of dyslexia assessment, uh, this, this method uh, is used by the uh, Dyslexia Association Centre. Uh, they use a checklist of questions. Their dys uh, dyslexia assessment focus on proficiency in phonological awareness, where they give uh, they ask the children to pronounce, eh? pronounce as the letters, pronounce the words. Then they also look at proficiency in rapid automized naming. So it's the the child has to they give uh, letters the child have to uh, name uh, what is the letters and also in reading fluency on the right side are the words uh, the words that they uh, use in the assessment uh, for the spelling and copying words so the, the child um, the children um, were asked to spell uh, this other word this is for proposed standard one to two so different uh, words are given to, uh, uh, to the children depending on their levels. Uh, standard one and two different words, standard three and four and um, uh, five and six, and uh, 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 they use a uh, different uh, words. Uh, so the example, uh, the children have to write bits, walk, hand, girl, milk, and house. So um, surprisingly, if the children have dyslexia, and the, the, the result will be, you ask them to write big, they will write dick. Okay, and B, they confuse um, between B and D. Uh, so this uh, as, uh, assessment is carried out by an educational psychologist or a specialist, this is a teacher. So only specialists uh, can uh, do the assessment. And then it is time consuming, okay, because uh, the child have to carry out, they, they, it's not this, they have many um, tasks, reading, spelling, pronunciation and many more. Uh, the one that I showed to you on the screen, uh, just an example. Okay, uh, there are many other techniques that we can use to diagnose dyslexia. So researchers have used positron emission tomography. So this technique relies on blood flow. It uses the exposure of radioactive injection. You can see in the diagram, uh, the child have to lie down. Then there, there is a case where uh, in the research, the child has to do activities. While lying down, they have to do the activities because they want to look at the brain images during the activity. And that activity, I mean, is not comfortable for the Child. Another method is uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging. It is also image, okay, image processing. So actually, uh, the researcher use this technique uh, to look at the reading, dis uh, reading disability. So this technique relies on the hip motion, which see where decrease the measured signal. Another technique is uh, electroencephalogram or in short EEG um, or some people uh, you can uh, call it brain wave or brain signals. So this is um, uh, non-invasive techniques or painless but electrode have to be placed on the scalp uh, to record the electrical activity of human brain. Um, this technique, uh, the time duration is very good uh, down to microsecond. So 
this technique enable brain activity to be tracked more accurately. So before you can use the EEG, so for example, you want to use the EEG, uh, um, that, that technique is used by my research team. We use EEG, all right? So before we use the EEG, uh, because you have to place electrodes on the scalp. So um, you have to know where to place, uh, what location to place the electrodes. So before you can do that, you have to um, um, find out the reading writing path. So, what is the associate electrodes that associate with the reading writing path? So, when the person writes, so the information will travel from the primary visual cortex. Then it will go to angular gyrus. So, here, primary visual cortex move to angular gyrus. So, in the angular gyrus, so this part, it is um, um, responsible for processing uh, relate uh, processing related to uh, language eh? language processing number processing and memory retrieval and attention uh, this is uh, angular virus area and then from the angular virus, uh, virus area the infection travel to vernicle area so this vernicle area uh, is responsible for speech processing and understanding language so it will then move to the broca areas uh, yeah, this is for production of speech and then to the motor cortex, uh, this is where the control, the planning uh, uh, is uh, uh, happen, eh? execution of the um, voluntary movement that happens in the motor cortex. So we have to understand the reading and writing path. Once we know uh, the reading and writing path, then we can decide uh, on where to place the electrode on the um, uh, subject scalp. Okay, we have uh, collab uh, collaboration, sorry, collaboration with Dyslexia, uh, the Dyslexia Association Center. So you can use this, you can see in this picture. So we have several meetings with them. So why we have to do that? Because we have to uh, study, study how they assess uh, the the how they do, how they carry out the dyslexia assessment. Okay, and then some of my students uh, attend their classes to look at how they um, carry out the intervention program, how the teacher teach the dyslexic children. Um, another important uh, thing that uh, we have to cover with them is to, to get the subject, okay, subject for the subject recruitment. Okay, um, this is, uh, if you can see, uh, the cursor, uh, this is Puan Saria. Okay, director of the Dyslexia Association Center. Uh, she is the expert specialist. Um, she can tell um, by looking at the uh, children, can tell whether the children uh, have a dyslexia or not. But uh, not many, uh, but the problem is there is that um, there are not many. Eh? There's not many uh, specialists in Malaysia. Okay, a limited specialist in Malaysia that can um, assess uh, or diagnose uh, uh, dyslexia just uh, by uh, their experience, using their experience and skill. All right, so uh, I'll share with you um, our techniques in, uh, rec uh, in recognizing dyslexia. And once we know uh, about the, um, the how and the the conventional method uh, is carried out. What are the steps uh, in the, uh, the conventional method? What are the uh, words that they use to assess the, uh, the children? So we design our own, okay, this is the super stage, uh, EEG recording protocol design. So in this EEG protocol design, the subjects are given uh, activities. Uh, so we develop the computer-based assessment, okay, and then computer-based assessment. So usually in the conventional method, they use um, just uh, a paper and the, the subject have to write on the piece of paper. Now they don't, uh, they and still the subject have to write on the piece of paper. Now they don't look at the um, paper anymore and we put it on the uh, on display on the screen computer screen and, and the 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 um the uh, the screen will change yeah? the the letters uh, will be changed after uh, we set uh, the time for them to answer the question all right uh, we gave them uh, writing words and non words why non words uh, non words um this is to give them a little bit uh, difficulty because so that they don't use the memory. So if we give the, them normal words, maybe they use the memory 
And they you they just memorize the word then just the right. So we want to know whether they can copy the correct uh, letter of word. So we give the, them a noun words, right? Uh, and the second stage that we uh, put electrodes on the uh, scalp, eight electrodes. These electrodes are electrode related to the reading writing part that I mentioned to you uh, just now. So that is the, the Second stage, the next stage is the EG uh, signal processing and analysis where we have band pass filtering. So we have to remove noise, so that will be a lot of noise. When you um, record the EG signal, uh, you, you always face uh, uh, problems with noise. Then we perform analysis, fast Fourier transform, and to the topography brain map. So move to the next stage is the feature extraction. In this uh, stage, we use uh, power spectral density and discrete wave and also discrete wavelet transform. And then uh, for the classification, uh, we have the we have as a mean. Uh, there are the methods that we uh, use in the works. Uh, so what vector machine? Enhanced learning machines and K nearest neighbor. Uh, we are now in the stage of as I mean the deep learning. Uh, so I want to get about four methods that we uh, as I mean in the work. Okay, now we uh, reach the um, about uh, at the end of my talk. So I can I hope that you can see uh, in detecting specific learning activities using AI, there are uh, common processes. Uh, uh, if you come, you look at there all the, just now. Yeah, I explained to you about you know seeing um, uh, dyscalculia, dys dysgraphia, and also uh, dyslexia. All of them have the common process where, where uh, we have to execute specific activities, for example, writing or reading or uh, mathematic uh, tasks, uh, mathematic uh, task, questions. They have to uh, answer mathematical questions. And then um, 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 we have a pre processing, feature extraction, and classification. Uh, I forgot to uh, mention, and um, there are issues. If you use AI, there are uh, common issues. Is the uh, if you want a, a curate, hmm, a curate um, classification, you have to use proper training data set. Uh, this is the challenging uh, the, the issue in AI classification uh, or classification using AI. We uh, have to use proper training data set. And in some methods, it requires a large data set uh, to get uh, a high accuracy. And then uh, if you also remember, um, I described about the techniques used uh, in uh, detecting specific learning activities, uh, AI techniques used. Um, not many, eh? there are researchers who use deep learning, but not many of them. Uh, use deep learning. Uh, so we can explore deep learning in the future research if you are interested uh, in uh, detecting specific learning activities, uh, specific learning disorder um, using AI. I just want to, before I uh, end this talk, I just want to uh, share with you, this is uh, my, uh, our uh, dyslexia research team. So Prof. Ali Yukwan, also in my team, um, in the uh, dyslexia uh, diagnosis team. So and the rest are my students and uh, we have uh, Dr. Zulkifli Mahmoudin already graduated, a PhD student. Was a, he was uh, our PhD student and Ahmad Zubi still working uh, on it. Uh, Inshallah, next year uh, he also will be graduating. So the rest are um, my um, MS, uh, our MSc students. Uh, some of them are already graduated. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, you can uh, uh, ask questions or you can also uh, share uh, uh, your experience or your uh, knowledge in this area. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, to Datin Wahida for her interesting uh, presentation. Okay, so uh, I open the floor to question and answer. So anybody would like to ask Datin regarding her uh, research? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Karim and I would like to ask a question. Um, thank you for your insightful sharing. Um, it's very interesting to see um, a lot of new development in terms of assessment for diagnosis, specifically for uh, learning disorder. Uh, what, what I would like to ask is, in terms of diagnosis, um, based on my limited exposure, um, some people refer to the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, um, and some refer to the ICD. 
And one of the complications of diagnosis is that um, there are some complexity in terms of exposure to academic facility. So for example, if you refer to DSM, um, to make sure that we do not misdiagnose the children, one of the things is to ensure that they have years of experience in academic facility first before further assessment is being done. So in terms of using AI, what are some of the things that can be helpful in to ensure misdiagnosis from happening? Thank you. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I cannot answer that question because uh, I, uh, what, and I know um, the AI is good. Um, okay, and if you use AI and you actually, it depends, like I mentioned just now, it depends on the input. Okay, input data set. So, uh, if you want, uh, you don't want, um, I mean, you want to have a uh, accurate, um, uh, less, you want, you, want, you want less error, I mean, high accuracy, you have to uh, add in. Okay, it's not just straightforward, uh, like I mentioned to you just now. You have to add in a feature selection techniques that means um, to select the significant events. Uh, the AI is good. And, um, then statistical method, um, I'm not sure about the statistical method, but from my reading, uh, uh, I can see that AI is the best um, method. Uh, so, um, but you can get high accuracy only if you add a few techniques before the classification. Okay, you have to uh, get a good uh, training data set. So, you have to add in uh, the several processes. Uh, like that's I can tell you. Uh, more than that, uh, maybe uh, other people can share uh, their experience. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Karim, for your question. Um, anybody else would like to ask Datin regarding her research? Okay, so maybe one question from me, um, Datin. Uh, based on your uh, experience throughout your, your research, what is the um, recovery rate of these uh, children will they will they be able to recover fully their learning ability yes will... okay go on go on, go on. <laughs> okay so uh, so so, so be, uh, basically um will it be 100 percent, or there will still be uh there it will only be in terms of improvement of up to a certain percentage in yes, terms of their uh, ability um because uh if you have to refer to the um, based on the uh, based on the dyslexic association center um, the information from them um, the student needs about three months okay if uh, they send them to them earlier this is the conventional method uh, it takes about uh, three months uh, to um, improve uh, improve in writing a little bit but they have to uh, up three months, I mean full time, uh, to full uh, full time classes, and then they have to come again um, to uh, consistently. I mean, uh, in one week, maybe uh, during weekend, they have to go and have uh, and learn again to make sure that um, they will re recover, right? But and actually, and uh, I forgot to mention just now, dyslexic children they have impairment in the left side, so. If uh, uh, you need a uh, proper training, okay, um, like the dyslexia station center, they train the uh, the right side. If you uh, give activity to train the left side, they won't uh, recover, all right? Um, they won't improve, not recover. They won't they won't improve the the uh, they won't uh, write uh, um, uh, correctly. But if you uh, use and uh, you train them, use activity that will train the right side. Uh, Insha Allah, they will recover. But that took about uh, three months um, okay, training. So uh, maybe, maybe, all right, maybe you or us can uh, design, um, like in my case, I just detect. Uh, maybe you can design a neurofeedback system that can train uh, the child, maybe and can train in a few days, uh, they can uh, uh, get all the skill back. Okay. Okay, uh, so thank you very much for the explanation. Um, so basically, the age factor it plays a role in the uh, improvement of the uh, disabilities. That, that's what I can conclude from, from your answer. And of course, the, the design of neurofeedback system would be a good avenue for potential research actually. That's, that's, one, I, that's one aspect that I have observed. Okay, so uh, uh, anybody else would like to ask a question? To that in? No. Okay. Uh, 
just one last question from me, Latin. Uh, based on your experience, okay, what is the uh, greatest challenges that your team face when you are conducting the research? Is it uh, on the uh, data collection phase or is it on towards the end, the end stage of the research? Okay, there are two, uh, two parts. The early part also is the um, challenging because you know it, it is children. You need have to have a skill uh, when you want to collect data from children. Okay, you, know, you will need to make them happy. If you don't know how to handle children, then it will be a uh, uh, an issue to you. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to get them to uh, sit uh, quite quietly, you know, concentrate. Um, you know, and, and dyslexia, and dyslexic children, they also active, uh, but they can listen to you, okay? But you, there is a way that you uh, have to handle them. That is one thing. And then to get um, uh, more, we need more data. That is another uh, uh, issues uh, because uh, as I mentioned to you, some of the uh, artificial intelligence needs a large data set. To get uh, a lot of data is typical uh, because I mean, uh, when you talk about um, uh, because you deal with children, you need to get a permission from the parents. So uh, mm. you need, and that's one thing. So and uh, not many parents will allow uh, uh, their children to take part in the uh, research. Uh, that's the, the challenge part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Latin. Okay. Um, so uh, one uh, one last last call. Okay. Uh, anybody like uh, to ask anything? Okay, uh, so I guess uh, since there is no more question, uh, maybe uh, after this, you you know, if you have further question, I think you can contact uh, uh, Professor Datin Dr. Wahida directly uh, at her email address. She is at the Microwave Research Institute. Okay, so before we uh, before we adjourn the um, the webinar, okay, uh, please make sure that you sign in the attendance through the given link at the chat box. So uh, I guess uh, with that, uh, I thank again uh, Datin uh, Wahida for her interesting uh, research talk and also to the Pejabat uh, TNCPI for organizing this webinar series. All right. So um, till, we, till we meet again next time, inshallah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, everyone.